Hello everyone, this is Chuck Fry from the Mind Mapping Software Blog. Recently on Google Plus, the new social media sharing service, Chris Brogan asked his followers where they need help in writing. This question resulted in many comments. Uh, one of the recurring themes that I saw is that people are struggling with how to do a better job of structuring their writing. I posted a comment about using mind mapping software to fill this role and that led to several follow-up questions about this technique. Based on that level of interest, I soon realized that a lot of people who write, either for pleasure or as part of their jobs, may need help in this area of pre-writing. In other words, organizing your thoughts so your writing is clear, persuasive, and effective, so it can have the impact that you want it to have. So I decided to create this tutorial. In this brief video, I'm going to show you a simple process for using mind mapping software to structure your next writing project. Whether you're writing an article, a blog post, a white paper, a book, or other type of business or personal writing, this type of software can help you to organize your thoughts visually, add detail to them, and essentially create a very efficient visual outline that will ultimately streamline your writing process. I also strongly believe that your finished uh, piece will be stronger if you use this technique. Why? Because if instead of just starting to write immediately, as most people do, you'll be taking the important first step of thinking through what you want to say and making your thinking visible in this software. In addition, using mind mapping software helps to transmute your ideas into a visual format that's very well aligned with the way your brain likes to process information, and that's a real plus because you'll be leveraging more of your brain's awesome power in the process. And in the end, I believe that will mean better writing. One final note, if you want to try this technique but don't have mind mapping software on your computer, I recommend that you purchase XMind Pro for $49 US. This isn't a commercial for the program, I just think it's a great basic mind mapping program that's fairly easy to use. There is a free version of XMind, but you can't export your mind maps to Word in it. And you need a new, do, you need XMind Pro, which is this version of the program, to do that. Still very inexpensive, under $100, very effective. So let's get started. The first step that you're going to take in, in following this simple process is by creating a central topic. I've already done that, something called writing with mind maps. As a second step, I'm going to add a topic that I'm going to call overview. This isn't going to be part of your finished article, but it's where you really kind of establish the baseline for your thinking. It's where you're going to define what the audience is for your written piece and perhaps set some objectives for your writing. Let's just zoom in on this a little closer so you can see it better. There we go. And I'm not going to go through this for the sake of brevity, but you can add subtopics to each of these that will really help to flesh out your thinking. With any article or book or whatever type of writing you're doing, you need an attention getting introduction. In today's world, there's so much material, especially out on the web, uh, that the scarcest resource really is attention. So you need something that's going to get your reader's attention. Next, you add first level topics to your mind map for your major points. These are the main subdivisions of your article equivalent to um, to major headings in your finished piece. But right now you're just defining them in the form of keywords. And what I urge you to do next after you've defined these major divisions of your topic that you're writing about is start adding subtopics that further define that topic that you're writing about. I'm just going to quickly add three of them. And one of the marvelous things about mind mapping software is that you can hang additional information on it. Now, 
what you're looking at here is kind of a visual equivalent of a hierarchical outline that you might have done in school where you have major points flush left and then sub points are indented and indented under that and what you have uh, here is a visual equivalent to it but what makes this different is you can add more detail to it let's say for example that uh, I have something a little more lengthy than is going to fit in a topic what I can do here is is put that in a note it was a dark and stormy night and if I just click away from that you can see the note has been added it's there it's not in your face which is good and as a general rule with mind maps for topics and subtopics you want to make sure that they're no more than one to three words maximum otherwise they create too much visual clutter anything longer than that you're going to want to put into a note let me reopen this again you can see that there's all sorts of text formatting options here this isn't just a plain text note and what's going to happen here is when you export this to Microsoft Word from this program XMind that I'm using, the topics will become major heading types, heading one, heading two, heading three, depending on what level of the mind map we're talking about, and the notes are going to become paragraph text. So in effect, you can capture quite a bit of detail uh, in this visual form and by the time you export it over to Word your piece is half written already. I'm going to take this subtopic and I'm going to add a hyperlink. Uh, as you're writing and researching often you're referring to web pages and you can easily copy and paste those into one of these uh, this hyperlink form. I'm just going to type in the URL of my mind mapping software blog and as you can see this has now become a link that you can easily get to you can also attach files I have to use the insert menu to do that insert attachment and we're just gonna grab what are we whatever we can find here let's just use this word document since that would be a common type of of attachment that you'd want to add to your outline so there you have it. You've done a first pass of putting your thinking on uh, on screen so that you can consider it. In other words, being able to think about your thinking visually. And once you've finished adding whatever details you can to this first pass at your mind map, you need to step back and ask yourself some questions. First of all, what's missing? What's unclear? What's superfluous? What, what could you get rid of that doesn't really add to your article? I mean, you, as, as you're envisioning what this article should contain, by the time you see your whole visual outline, there's probably some dead ends there that don't really fit. This is your opportunity to delete those from your map, or you could actually create a first level topic called Undecided. And that could just be your, your container for all of this material that you're not quite sure what to do with put it off to the side so it's not getting in the way of your thinking. And then finally, look at your mind map starting at the 12 o'clock position and going clockwise and look at the flow of topics and subtopics. Does it make sense? If not, this is your opportunity to start moving things around. And that's one of the real strengths of mind mapping software here is that there isn't another type of software that gives you as much flexibility as mind mapping software does to reorganize your content. Let's say this subtopic B, whatever it is, it, it's really not fitting under my first major point. It really belongs in the second section here. So I can easily move that here. Subtopic C, you know, you know, I've kind of changed my thinking as far as the flow of this article. This now really fits better under my third major point. So you can see how easy it is to move material around and all of the assets that you've created uh, follow along with it. The hyperlinks, the documents, the notes, and that's a marvelous thing. And this is your real opportunity to do some what ifing with the content of your article you can move something to a new location if you don't like it there you can always move it back or move it to a different place or simply do an undo it's very simple and 
So what, what you're doing here essentially is creating a skeleton. Think of it like a human skeleton. It's the underlying structure of your writing. When you're working in Microsoft Word or another word processing program, the structure is essentially invisible. You can't see it as you're working with it. It's there. It's beneath the surface. And if you're a really good writer, your mind is going to be kind of keeping track of that as you write. But for most of us, the structure is completely lost within the structure of our paragraphs. And uh, so look at this again as a skeletal representation. You're building the skeleton, making sure it's complete in every detail. And then when you move it over to Word, think of that as the equivalent of putting flesh on the bones. Now in the closing moment of this little video, I'm going to show you what a map looks like when it's exported. So you can see there's plenty of options here, but what I want is, uh, let's go with Word 97 2003 since that's compatible with older versions of Word. And I've now told it to export my map. It's going to give me some options here. I want my hyperlinks, attachments, and notes to come along. I could do an overview picture. You can see in the picture on the right of these checkboxes, uh, kind of a preview. I don't really want an overview picture. I just want the basics. And now I'm going to give it a name. Let's just call it XMind for the sake of simplicity. And when I click Finish, it's going to actually export all of these topics, subtopics, notes, and other assets into a Word document, which should open momentarily. Okay, as you can see, we now have a hierarchical outline. It's not indented, but major level topic is a 1. Audience and objectives are the next level down. There are 1.1, 1.2. And I just want to show you what happens to the things that we've attached to these topics. Subtopic B is a hyperlink and you can see that hyperlink's been maintained and where we inserted a document there actually isn't a link here but it refers to the uh, document by name so we can find it and as I promised the notes which is where you put anything longer than a few words long that has become paragraph text in our document so it gets you off to a great starting point for writing your article. And in closing, I hope you found this little tutorial to be useful. If you have any questions, please send me a feedback message on my mind mapping software blog, or you can send an email to me at chuck at innovation tools, all one word, dot com. Thanks for watching, and I wish you much luck with your writing.